So, you think you know about front suspension? No, you don't know jack. So let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another episode of Toolbox Topic. I'm joined today by my co-host, Wyatt Spaulding. Wyatt, how the hell are you? What's up, man? Ah, same old shit, dude. <laughs> yep. uh, just to give everybody fair warning, you can get home till 1.30 in the morning today as you're watching this. It's like May 27th. I was hiking Sedona yesterday and chasing that full moon last night. So this could be a dumpster fire of epic proportions. So. <laughs> Just full disclosure as far as that goes. So anyways, we're coming to you, not live, recorded in front of a studio audience because Brandon's in the background lurking someplace today from Trek Bicycle Stores of West Phoenix in Goodyear, Arizona. And as you could ascertain from the intro, Wyatt, we're talking about front suspension today. Yep, uh -huh. So as some of you guys may remember, people who watch the channel faithfully, we appreciate that. A few weeks ago, we did a rear shock rebuild maintenance. Correct. Uh -huh. And you guys saw there was a lot involved, but the steps were not hard to follow. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I think that everybody is capable of doing. So today, we are going to rebuild the front shock. Yep. Uh -huh. So we're going to complete that circle. Wyatt, how often, let's start there. How often uh -huh. should people be maintaining their front suspension and doing this type of rebuild. Definitely, so the, the lower surface is very much kind of like we talked last time on the shock there, can service, much like an oil change, just okay. like preventative maintenance kind of deal. Right. Um, so do it as much as you can. Um, if you have the knowledge and the tools to do it yourself, do it very frequently. Um, but Fox is gonna recommend every 50 ride hours, um, so I try and stick with that okay. um, at least. Um, if you, know, you can push it a little longer, or a little sooner. Um, it's not going to hurt, okay. um, but I try and do it all the time. You know, I try and do it as much as I can just to keep everything in working order. So now with Fox, and we have to remind everybody, these are mm -hmm. not sponsored videos. We don't, we'll links down to everything and those links don't count for us for anything. So, but mm -hmm. like and subscribe does. So before we even go any further, that helps, get yeah. to business. Yeah. Um, it, or is Rock Shock follow a uh, similar timetable as far yep. as hours go? Okay. Yep. Uh -huh. I think they actually recommend the same. Same the thing? Same for their forks. Okay. Uh -huh. Yep, so pretty Similar much on the, the rebuild or rebuild the yeah, maintenance uh -huh. and everything so like yeah, that? Yeah, the okay. lowers, lower service, we're doing a Fox 36 today, um, but it's pretty much the same for any fork pretty much past like 2000 up right. to present. Um, it does get a little different older things, um, Fox Taluses and some of the weird models like that. Um, so definitely research the model that you're doing beforehand. Um, we're getting all this information for bath oil weights and all that other stuff off the Fox website, so always reference that or the Rock Shocks website. Yeah, um, and we'll have links for those websites down below, um, as well as links to Fox's and Rock Shocks YouTube channel because they mm -hmm. do have tutorials there. Yeah, they've got some for great specific, stuff. so they got some good tutorials mm -hmm. there. So, but we'd rather have you watch it here, goddamn it, and that's why we make these videos. <laughs> so, all right. So, what's what's first? Obviously, we've removed. Mm -hmm. um, the shock from the bike, which is important. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you're not going to be able to pull this off with it still mounted to the bike. What's the first step? What are some of the things that people need to know? And what are some of the safety precautions they need to take? I mean, is this going to take it apart and shoot them in the eye or something like that? Uh, it won't do that. So the, the air chamber is going to be a whole separate, a separate thing. Okay. Uh, we, we could service that later. They don't recommend you do that until I think it's either 150 or 200 right hours. Okay. Um, so that's not necessary at the moment. Um, it is kind of a good idea just to let the pressure out, um, just to see how everything's functioning, and maybe for the customer, for yourself at that moment, uh, you could recommend an air spring service. Okay. Um, the good thing to do with that um, is to record record your pressure as well, so you can put the suspension back where it was. Um, so I'm gonna just grab a shock pump, connect that up. Um, you will lose about three to five psi as you thread this on because you're if you think you're filling this. Right you're pressurizing this little hose right here with the pressure from your fork. Yeah. So this is gonna read out to 76. I had it at like 82, so that's right on the dot, perfect. Um, it's not leaking or anything, so that's good. A good key thing is when you're removing the air from the chambers, you don't wanna see your fork suck all the way up. If it sucks all the way up, um, you have negative air trapped, and at that point you're gonna wanna recommend an air spring service um, for yourself or for the customer. Yeah. Um, because and anybody who's eaten Taco Tuesday knows all about trapping that negative air. So. <laughs> they do, yeah, they'll <laughs> tell you about it. So we've let the air out. Um, I would have marked that down if it was important, but I know what my fork's being ridden at, so that's not necessarily too important. Right. Um, we can put that back on 
for the time being just so we don't lose it. Um, and then I've already kind of cleaned the fork up and wiped it down. It was really dirty beforehand, um, but definitely just use like an all-purpose cleaner um, and wipe it down um, just because you don't want any of that dirt that's on the fork falling into in the lowers. That's just going to create sense. more time for you. Um, and if you don't get it, that, you know, it's going to be mixing around with the oil in there and then it's scratching your stanchions away as you're riding. Mm, definitely so, don't want that. So clean it up beforehand. Um, you are going to need a couple more tools for the fork than we did have in the last video. Um, but that's going to be involved in your next step. Right. Um, is there's going to be two little, two little bolts here on the bottom of the fork. Um, on a Fox 36, you actually have a rebound cap so you can smash your, uh, your fork on rocks and not break your damper. Right. So you're going to want to remove that. Um, you're going to see a five millimeter here and a 10 millimeter here on okay. a Fox 36. Um, some forks are going to be two like 34s. For example, some of them are going to be two five millimeters. Some of them are going to be a, f a five and that, that 10. Um, so, so it, it just depends on the shock or not. Uh, uh, correct me, 10 and 15. 10 and 15, 10 okay. and 15, not five. Um, the rebound knob on a Fox 36 has a little set screw. Um, they, they all pretty much have a little set screw. Um, some of the rock so you, stuff. You might ask Thomas, why don't you have a camera angle on that? Because the camera's set up on the workbench that we're going to and I'm poor. So I only have two cameras, but that can change. If you guys start liking and sharing these videos, yeah. you know, I might be able to get some of that, that YouTube money. Yeah, that, that would help <laughs> for sure. But once you, uh, once you pull your rebound knob off, you can kind of see, um, you yeah, know, we could turn that around we can turn and turn that for you. Now that that nut is exposed here. Um, so you're going to get, yeah. be able to get access to that. Remember, expose your nuts guys. Yeah. Expose your nuts during the fork service <laughs> and your next step. Uh, is to grab your socket. So like I said before, we got 10 millimeter. I just millimeter. realized you cut your hair, Wyatt. I, I knew did, it when you yeah. walked in. Yeah, this is very uh, 80s with that rat tail, We dude. got the rat tail. Oh, it, man. It helps with the suspension service. Dude, I'm bringing so. you parachute pants next time <laughs> I show up. <laughs> but next up is grab your grab your sockets. Oh. I grabbed a 14 mil. That's not going to work. Do you want parachute pants or a Michael Jackson jacket? I'll take both if you're offering. Dude, no. I would dude. go good together. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I will find that shit online. All Wyatt has to do is give me his sizes, and then next time we do a maintenance video like this, pull it out. Yeah, pull I would say thing. we'll sing Thriller, but we'd probably get popped for copyright. <laughs> probably, <laughs> even though it would be badass. Oh Christ! Cool. But Are we done yet? I freaking need more coffee. <laughs> I'm. Yeah, I'm. I'm there too. Oh man. Quite sleepy. But once you get your nuts off. If you know what I mean. <laughs> You're going to use these kind of, these are the, the tools I'm speaking of. Um, Fox will sell these. Um, these are just uh, damper shaft tools. Um, these are helping you have a hammerable surface to um, disconnect the damper shaft okay. from the lowers. Um, these kind of fit into the lowers and almost like press in somewhat when you tighten those foot bolts down. Okay. Um, so you're going to have to use a hammer to get those off. Definitely buy these tools. Rock shocks, they actually just have you hammer the bolts. Um, Fox do not do that though because you have that little shaft right there that your rebound knob's going on. So if you go hammering that, you're going to break you're shit gonna, and yeah, you're going to be bombed. Up. So I always thread these on until they stop and then thread it a couple threads back off because obviously you need to be able to hit. Um, but you also want to know that you have enough threads engaged on the tool that you're not hammering on like two threads right um, and damaging things so once you have those on you can use a hammer um, you just want to see those bottom out you want to see those threads that you had exposed go into the fork um, so that you know those are disconnected some of them take a, a couple good wax right um, but once you do that now we can get the oil out of the fork um, because we'll be able to take the lowers off so Oh, that's what the trash can's for. Yep. The uh -huh. fresh trash can. So, yeah, you want something to collect your oil in. On um, this instance, we're just going to use this trash can here. <clears throat> and now we can rotate this thing down now. And you will see, if you push lowers down like that, you'll start seeing oil come out. A little, there we go. A whack. Oh, yeah. Kind of reminds you of a Sunday out. morning after a late Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty quick. It's not like a car where you gotta wait like 20 minutes for the last little drip, you know? Right. Um, but you can eventually pull those off and that will kind of help the oil drain out too, not having the seals uh, creating pressure on there. 
Now, as you guys are watching this, if you have questions pop up in your head or anything like that, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Um, and we'll address those as they come in. Um, sometimes with uh, videos like this, we'll think of the question and then we'll wait till the end and then yeah. kind of forget the question that you were going to ask. So Correct. don't be afraid to, uh, to leave those uh, comments and questions down below. So. Yeah. So at this point, I'm going to go throw some uh, some nitro gloves on just because we're working with oil and all that stuff now. Now, is this like that slick honey? Oh, not yet. Not we're gonna, yet. We're going to use that, though. Nice. That's, that's very critical for the uh, for the fork as well to feel good. So always get some. It's good to get nitro gloves, obviously, to get your freaking oils and all that stuff off the uh, suspension. Right. Um, and just to keep your hands clean and carcinogen free for the time being. Is there anything that's carcinogen free these days? Not really. Yeah, kind of Especially if you're in California because they just put it on everything. Right. <laughs> but uh, now's a good time. We have some 99% or something close to that um, isopropyl alcohol. 70%. Just like on the last one? Yep, 70% yeah. will work just fine too. Um, you don't necessarily want to use like a heavy degreaser on this stuff. Um, it's a little more fragile than that, um, mainly because there's other seals that we're not servicing for the time being, kind right. of like in the shock, what we said. Um, that you don't want any degreaser or Ooh, smell like that alcohol, to. dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's PVC glue. So we're gonna we're just gonna clean this whole area up with the uh, the ISO. And then we'll clean the lowers as well. Um, there's gonna be a sag ring here that we're gonna replace that we can just toss. So we'll have a new one in the kit. Nice. Um, this sag time ring, not to be confused with your O ring. That's different. If you blow it out, you can't replace it. So. <laughs> Be mindful when you're eating Taco Tuesday on yep. that. Cool. And then that, that part's right. pretty much pretty much done there. Sweet. Um, what we're going to do now, I'll move these over here. Um, it's a good time to remove our seals on the lowers. Okay. Um, before I do that, though, we still got a lot of kind of like oil dripping out of here. Um, so what I like to always do is, one moment here. Now, here's the important uh, the importance of again of having a stand. If you're mm -hmm. going to be performing maintenance like this at home, um, highly recommend that you get a bike stand. Now, here at Trek, they use Park Tools. Um, I have a Park Tools work stand that I love. It definitely wasn't the most expensive one, but it does the trick. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful. Um, we want you guys to have the tools you need to perform these procedures, um, and know that not having the proper tools. <laughs> Yeah. It just makes it that much more difficult or not even an option as far as yeah. that goes. So I'm going to spray a little bit of isopropyl in here. Okay. Um, both sides and then stuff a rag in there. Okay. Um, just to collect all the excess oil down in the lowers. Um, oh. Use a little, nice, little dowel. A little dowel, something that's not going to risk scratching anything in there. Um, and I just push that to the bottom, let that absorb all that, that iso and, and oil down there while we're doing the rest of the work. Okay. Um, now we're going to grab a pick. You're going to have, I'm going to have to reuse one of these because the seal kit we have is missing one of these. Um, okay. The seal kits are out of stock like everything else right now. You're right. So similar to the rear shock, have the pick tool, be careful. Yep. So there's going to be two, seals. two uh, foam rings. That these, are, these job is to collect oil and keep the stanchions lubricated um, as you're riding. Those are going to be underneath your wiper seals here. Those are super easy to pull out. Um, you just need a little, little pick. You can use pretty much anything to get them out. These seals though, um, we like to use the, the Delrin rod to get those out, which is going to be this thing over here. Um, this is a soft plastic kind of nylon material, um, which is going to be, you're, no, you're never going to scratch the fork with this, which is nice. Um, a lot of people aren't going to have this, so you can use like a, a tire lever, plastic tire lever if you can get enough leverage. Some people end up using metal wands though, mm. or, or they'll use like a, like something oh, like a that. Uh, you wrench, can open do box it. Wrench. Yeah, you can do it, but it's, you're metal risking scratching metal. the surface. Yeah, metal on metal. It's if you can afford something like this, or if you can manage maybe to get it with like a, a tire lever, much better, much better. Um, try and avoid any right any metal on metal contact with this stuff. Um, but with this, this for example, just kind of put that in your elbow so you're not bending anything. Um, kind of dig that in. Takes a couple tries. But Stubborn little bastard. Yeah, they're in there. Fox ones are pretty tight, man, because they got that little right. almost metal washer on the outside. Rock shocks ones go in and out much easier. And we can just pop this in the trash, yeah? Yep, uh -huh. we can just dump those. Cool. We're going to replace those. The lower surface, that's what you're doing. You're cleaning um, the lower chamber down here, you're getting fresh oil in there. You're getting fresh wiper seals and fresh foam rings. That's going to be your service. Wow. Um, 
So at that point, we're pretty much getting close to finishing everything up already. Okay. Um, it's pretty quick. Nice. Um, we're gonna wipe down where those seals were. I'm gonna give a wipe on those bushings too. There's some bushings in there that the stanchions slide on. Um, so I'm gonna give those a little wipe, make sure they're clean. And otherwise, we're pretty we're pretty close. Sweet. Um, I'm gonna take my little rod now and push those pieces of oh, yeah. towel out and they'll have all our gross oil. You want to be cautious. There are some bump stops down there um, that are made to protect the uppers from impacting the lowers on hard impacts and bottom outs. So make sure those are still in there. They're very hard to show on camera. But if you just look down there with a, uh, with a uh, flashlight, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're just little right. rubber pieces that fit in the bottom of the lowers. And always inspect that too, because in this case, there is a little, my old crush washer just fell out, but if I had left that in there and didn't see that, that would cause issues later. Um, so always give it a visual before you put everything back together um, and make sure that there's nothing in the lowers that you're, you're not supposed to have in there. Good advice. Yeah, yeah, but at that point, I guess we just start putting the seals, putting the seals in. Uh, we, can, we can do that over here. This yeah, will yeah. be a good, yeah, this will be so a good. So uh, we're gonna move to the other workbench here, guys, and get a nice, fresh perspective you won't see our faces luckily for you guys well why it's good looking i'm old <laughs> old dried up bacon over here so um so that way we can give you a better view on the actual rebuild yeah, and we'll yeah. uh, come back and reassemble everything cool all right right on let's go so in our kit from fox imagine this was new i'm oh, look, using that actually though. oh perfect yeah <laughs> Sweet. Mm. So this is going to be our seal kit for. Wait a box. minute. Why? Why? Where's huh. Brandon at? Brandon? Where's Brandon He's at? He's over there. I heard he shaved his mustache he, again. He shaved it again. God damn that bastard. <laughs> he almost touched me last week. Why? You missed it. Did, we did had you a want me to touch you? We had a romantic moment. <laughs> almost. But he didn't want a spoon after, so I told him no. All right, guys. Give him, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So seal kit from Fox. Um, like I said, we're missing one of these foam rings. It's just an extra kit we had lying around. Okay. Um, but you're going to get two of those foam rings. You're going to get two new wiper seals, a sag ring, and your crush washers. So the other specific tool you're going to need is a seal press. Um, so I have the Fox 36 millimeter press. They make one for 32, 34, 36, 40, gotcha. all the forks, 38. Um, I like to, before doing this, remove these little outer rings right here okay. um, just for safety. Sometimes you can damage those while pressing them in, so it never okay. hurts just to pull them off. Um, and then your seal is going to slide right onto that, that seal press real nice. Um, this is where the slick honey kind of comes ah, into play. The slick honey, guys. You can't yeah. see the facial expression I'm making because yeah. it's all overhead at this point. <laughs> but a little bit of wipe of slick honey. You don't need a lot. Just a just an very small layer where the seals are going to go there, just so they kind of go in a little bit easier. I'm going to go grab my hammer. All right. Now we're going to get those in. For all my 2A friends out there, eh? <laughs> Seal press will go right in, though, just kind of like that. Um, we're just going to get the hammer. And the Fox tool will will bottom out on the lower, so you can okay. kind of hammer until you hear it. The, the noise change, kind of. Yeah. Um, Rock shocks, their tool, you can push the seal too far in. So, so you want to be mindful. Yeah, if you're servicing okay. like a pike or something like that. Um, Sounds be, like I'm switching to Fox. No, I don't know. They do make a little bit better tools, in my opinion, and serviceability is a little easier, but Rock Shocks is great, too. I love them. Cool. So we'll get those in. So you can hear that. Oh, that yeah. always change there. Distinct. It was very distinct. Um, at that point, we can put these little, our little springs back on our seals. Um, and at this point, you're going to be wanting to think about what oil you need to put in here, referring to your tech docs. Um, I've serviced this fork a million times, and Fox 36s are pretty chill, and most of them are all the same. So it, pretty much every new one from like 2019 to, to now is going to use 10 cc's or 10 milliliters of okay. 20 weight on one side. So we're going to get a little bit of that stuff. And then on the damper side, it's this use, isn't Jaeger Meister, guys. Don't looks think a that lot you can like freaking <laughs> drink yeah. that shit. Don't go drinking it. And it doesn't cure COVID either. No, I'm joking. Don't ban us, YouTube. <laughs> but um, this is going to be five weight uh, PTFE infused for the damper side <laughs> okay. of our of our bath, and I'll explain that once we get. get oh shit! I'm grabbing my coffee. Out. They can't see me really leave camera, but they oh, can they still can. hear my voice. <laughs> so. 
At this point, we're going to put the foam rings in um, to absorb a little bit of oil before you insert them into the lower legs. Um, it's always a good idea to kind of give these a spin around your finger to sometimes they're odd shaped to kind of make them more I'm circular. Back, one goes in our 20 weight and one's going to go in our five weight bath. Um, we can kind of just dip these in there and make sure they're, they're It's almost like submerged. fondue. Yeah, huh? We're making, <laughs> we're making specialty dishes oh, right now. They might be giants. So our air side, we're going to know because that's the side that we put air into. Right. And then our damper side is whatever we're adjusting with our damper. Um, so I said we're going to put the five weight in the damper side. We're going to put the 20 weight in the air side. Okay. So we'll grab this one with five weight oil on it. Um, you know, kind of put it on the rag to absorb any of that excess for a second. And then you just pop that underneath the seal. Um, you can put these in before you press the seal in, but it gets oil everywhere, and sometimes you can mess them up in the process, so I always put them in after. Gotcha, and it doesn't look that difficult. Yeah, it's not too difficult They're at all. They're fairly pliable. Yeah, super. That yeah, almost looks like an onion ring from Burger King. Yep. Uh -huh. Very These similar. Nasty little bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put that in on the air side with the 20 weight on it. Are. Now, how much does one of these kits cost? About like the 20, oils and stuff like that. About twenty dollars, okay. and then um, you're looking like I think it's like fourteen or fifteen bucks each bottle of uh, each jug. Maybe a little gotcha. more than that, twenty. Bucks so maybe somewhere between like, you know, seventy-five dollars, you can get everything you need, and this oil would last you quite a little bit. It's oh, not yeah. just uh -huh. one service type yep. thing. So yeah, because for this one, we're going to use we do use a little bit more damper fluid. We're going to use uh, end up putting forty milliliters of uh, the PTFE in the damper side. Okay. And then only ten of the gold. So yeah, the gold lasts you a long time. Right. You might have to get a little more of that uh, five weight if you're if you're doing it more gotcha. frequently. So keep that in mind, guys. It's mm -hmm. the, once you get the oil, it'll last you for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So at this point, we can uh, we can go back over to the other stand. I'll grab this from the kit. Um, that's our sag ring that we threw yep. away earlier. So we'll put that back on. Always remember that. Um, for the 36 case, we're going to grab one of those big uh, 15 mil crush washers and one of these uh, 10 mil crush washers that they have for us. Gotcha. Um, and I will go back over there. Cool. And get things finished off. All right. So, so now you can see me again, but I don't care. I need my coffee. <laughs> so now that we're back over here, um, like I said earlier, let's get that sag ring on there. Man. Oh, there it is. It's in my hand. It's in your hand. <laughs> So that always goes on air side on Fox stuff, and on Rock Shock it actually goes on the damper side. For Interesting. Because the, the, on the Rock Shock stuff, they have like a chart there. On yeah, the, I see. On the I remember that. Yeah. Probably. Um, so you can kind of make sure you're getting that in the right spot. I always take a little dab of slick honey. Sorry for walking all over the place. Yeah, everyone. no worries. But I always take a little remember, bit. Remember, guys. Honey. I mean, we try to do the, you know good production value for it, but we're in a working bike shop. Yeah. Okay. This isn't. <laughs> You know what? I take that back. The stuff we're doing is better than the shit coming out of Hollywood right now. So. <laughs> that is true. If any of you have seen Wonder Woman 1984, you'll know exactly what yeah. I'm talking about. So just a little bit on the inside of the seal there. You can kind of rub the excess you have too there yeah, just to make rub it. rub the excess on your shaft. Get it yeah. on, yeah. Yeah. And these just slide right on. Uh, you want to be careful, obviously, not to just jam the thing on there because you can kind of fold these seals over. Right. Um, so kind of work their way in easily. Um, there we go, and then it's on. Cool. At this point, we're going to put our oil in, because um, if you remember, we still have these little holes down here. Right. Um, so we'll pull the lowers off far enough that we can get oil on there, and now we're going to go grab a, uh, a little syringe, where right. um, you could turn this thing fully upside down and use like a funnel if you needed to. Um, and then we're going to put, like I said earlier, we're going to put 10 cc's in the air side of 20 weight and 40. Um, of that five weight in the damper side. So okay. let me go grab the syringe and we'll get that knocked out. Awesome. So obviously the amounts of fluid that you're using on these is minimal. Um, not like a car, which these days typically, you know, somewhere between, depending on your vehicle, six to, you know, some trucks, 10, 12 quarts. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. If you put too much, why, correct me if I'm wrong, if you mm -hmm. put too much, could you cause damage? If you put too much, um, there's a chance that when you're at like full travel or, or um, full bottom out, could you blow a you seal? Could almost blow a seal out. Okay. Um, or you'll just have like oil like excreting out. Okay. Um, it wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world. Like you, you would be able to fix it, you know. Right. But it's yeah, it's not a good idea okay. by any means. So remember, proper amount, guys. You don't have to celebrate it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Do it's not. always this is one of those cases where more is not better. Okay, you're not trying to plug a hole in the side of your house with silicone and stucco. <laughs> So I've got 10 milliliters right there of that 20 weight. That's going to go here on the air side. So we'll throw that in there. Done deal. Nice. Super easy. Then we got a lot going in the damper side um, of that five weight. And if you notice, he's using two different syringes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Keep those um, separated. Just like when you're drinking, beer before liquor, never sicker. Don't be mixing your booze. Don't be mixing Don't your be oil. Don't be mixing your oils. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's always better not to. So 20 there, 20 more. For some reason, I'm thinking of Pulp Fiction right now. <laughs> Why so? The syringe. Oh, the syringe. I got to stab yeah. her three times. <laughs> Don't put five weight through. in your heart. Yeah, yeah it's not going to do much for you. Oh, Lord. It's starting cool. to fall apart. Thank God we're on the tail end. It, yeah, Give we're. Give a chance to compose it's pretty before. Quick, right? It's yeah. pretty quick. This was this. actually it, faster than the rear rebuild. Yeah. So. And you need more specialty tools, like we said, but that's really the only difference. Is yeah. You need that that little press. You need hopefully a Delrin rod, so you're not scratching stuff. Right. Um, and then you need those those uh, damper tools. Now I will have a link down below for the Delrin rod. Mm -hmm. um, just and again, if you can do it with a tire level, great. You don't have to always buy these specific things. There are third hand uh, ways to get this done, but keep in mind that. Um, these surfaces are fairly fragile for as much abuse as they take scratching your stanchion on the inside or um, scratching where an o-ring sits or something like that that might not be damage that you notice right away but a period of time it'll wear and mm -hmm. you'll end up replacing your shock or your you know mm -hmm. actuator on your hydraulic disc brakes or something like that so these steps that we're uh suggesting or not suggesting telling you to follow but the precautions that we're suggesting are for mm -hmm. a reason. Yeah. Um, help, these yeah. parts are expensive. Even an entry level shock these days is going to set you back about five to six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. um, and that's money you could spend someplace else on your bike than mm -hmm. having to replace something because you, you just made a critical error or you yeah. were in a rush to try to get it mm -hmm. done and have the right tool. So, so those mm -hmm. are those are the reasons why we give these precautions. Definitely. Yeah. So la last step too is which requires um. You, you, they do recommend you use a torque wrench for this step. Um, you don't have to though, because it's really kind of a feel-based thing. Right. Um, off of these crush washers, because um, we're gonna put, like I said earlier, that that big crush washer on our damper side. This is what's gonna seal the oil in the fork right. with these nuts, um, because that little plastic washer, once you crush it on there, is gonna kind of cause that seal. Fit, yeah, fit into kinda that Kind of like lower. a ferrule would be. I don't know how many people out there are, are tradesmen or tradeswomen for that matter. Um, barrel on a piece of tubing. When you tighten that nut down, yep. it, it compresses it together and, and forms that bond, that seal to, yep. to keep it essentially watertight, or in this case, oil tight. Yeah, exactly. So we'll do that on that side, put our smaller one on the air side with our nut. And again, um, if you guys want to see a third camera angle on this for next time, buy us one. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's going to help us out. So share so, the videos. That helps us out too. Torque specs are, I think it's 16.4 or 15.4. Check the tech doc for the uh, 15 mil side. And then it's going to be 5.6. So real pretty low on right. the air side. Um, but I always, a lot of times, go by feel because the, the whole point is you want to feel that crush washer soak into yeah. that lower right there and I felt it and I don't need to go any further um, the, the crush washer is right. gonna help that nut stay on there as long as you're I mean if that was a little more than five probably right um, and that's okay but if you you know you're not gonna have that nut flying off it's pretty yeah. light torque and it's you're not gonna damage anything unless you're cranking on that yeah, thing. don't be like me back when I was <laughs> yeah I was known to shatter nipples and fuck everything up because I'd yeah. over torque it, you know, trying yeah. to get that last little bit. There's a time and a place to put your ass into it. Yeah. You know, most of this stuff, it isn't it. Exactly. This <laughs> one, yeah, is tighter, but yeah. at the same time, I'm just feeling at that moment where I feel that crush right. washer give, and then you'll feel a little firm stop right there. And there's, once you feel that firm stop, and you know that crush washer's in there, no further. No more. No so. further, yeah. And before any of you smart asses ask, Thomas, do you have a torque wrench for doing your bike maintenance? As a matter of fact, my torque wrench is on order. I'm still waiting for Park Tools to get it here. <laughs> so there, there you have it. I'm practicing what I preach sometimes, not all the times. And then never forget your rebound knob too. Right. So we're going to put our rebound knob back on. That would be a bummer if we didn't have that. And then we've got our little cap here. And the last step um, is obviously to re reinflate your suspension. I right. don't need to show that. Um, 
No. Um, or actually, it's it's kind of a good thing to do because I'll show you one extra step. Um, you want to equalize the suspension. Um, Thomas and I were talking about potentially doing like suspension science video in the future. I could explain this a lot further. And we are, video. and I'll t we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in the wrap up and everything. So I think a lot of people are going to be interested in yeah. that. So yeah, we already right. have some really good interest in the bike packing additional stuff. Sweet. So. Yeah. So really basic. I'll go into this more depth in the, the next video with the suspension. You have two chambers here um, because you have a positive chamber up here and a negative chamber. That makes your suspension feel real, real nice and fluid. When you're pumping air into your fork though, when there's no pressure in there, it's only going into your positive chamber. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get it up to like a little bit of pressure. I'm going to put 50 PSI in it. Um, and there's a little port on the fork and the air chamber like that shock when I was saying last time you need to equalize it, yeah. you're going to lose some pressure. Same thing on the, the newer forks. Um, so if you probably can't hear it, but you can oh, actually yeah. hear that air travel from the positive to the negative chamber. Um, and you'll see a pressure drop because of that, because, because it's going to a whole nother area in the fork. So yeah. it was sounds like when your car passenger farts a little kind of, you know, yeah, doesn't say anything about it. Yeah. But we I, saw it, it, for me being the driver, I put the windows on lockout. I want everybody <laughs> to enjoy that robust aroma. Yeah. So every time you add air, um, until you're at your desired pressure, do that, equalize it. You'll feel it all equalize. Um, and then again, pressure drop. So keep doing that until you're at your pressure you want. Equalize it. Make sure you're still there. And I'm right where I want to be. Last, Sweet. very last step is to clean everything. Um, you see, I have kind of a lot of oil and grease kind of around from the service. Um, if I was to throw this on the bike right now and one mountain bike right out here in the desert, this thing would be covered in dirt because oh, yeah. all that oil. Yeah, yeah. So clean everything very well yeah. afterwards. It goes back to what we said as far as like lubricating your drivetrain and everything like that. Don't leave it sloppy, especially here in the Southwest region because that dust that it gathers and collects mm -hmm. will actually do so much harm oh, yeah. to these moving parts. Yeah. Um, so. If you guys remember... One of the first episodes we did, Brandon actually showed an example of a stanchion that had been worn yeah. through because of that. And it, it'll, it'll do a number. And again, these parts are expensive. We don't want to see you have to replace them prematurely. Because all of these, it's a mechanical device, a mechanical apparatus, it will eventually wear out and need replacement. But there's yeah. a lot of things you can do to prolong that. Yeah. Um, so you're not you know, doing it once a year twice a year you know on some of these things that should be lasting you multiple years yeah mm -hmm. so in that regard um all right Wyatt so that was done. actually man I mean it's, it's you're right more specialty tools but that was that was pretty darn easy it's pretty easy you know and a lot of people get really scared when they're looking into it because it sounds very in-depth but suspension really doesn't get very crazy until you start doing air springs and dampers lower services you're right it's pretty easy um and it's if you could change your oil on your car, you could probably do that. Awesome. You know? Yeah. It's, it's or change brakes. I mean, it's some, again, you do it a couple yeah. times. You get familiar with the tools and the procedure and everything. So, yeah. well, awesome. Guys, there you have it. Friggin' front suspension rebuild, which is a great follow up to the rear suspension yeah. rebuild. Mm -hmm. Now, as Wyatt alluded, what we're going to do here probably in the next couple weeks is when you'll see that episode. Um, I'll sit down with Wyatt and figure out how we're going to do it. We'll get a whiteboard, which mm -hmm. that'll be fun. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And we're going to explain the theory behind suspension, how it works, why it works, um, the minutia as far as adjustments and, mm -hmm. you know, why certain levels work better for certain terrains and everything. Um, we'll probably throw out some of those buzzwords, low frequency dampening and <laughs> yeah, freaking bullshit yeah. like that. No, we won't. Because if you want to hear that shit, go to the fucking Global Biking Network. <laughs> Goddamn English about. tarts. <laughs> no, I'm joking, the guys. English hey, muffins. they came up with stones to go with your tea if you're that type of person. What is that? A scone? Oh, a scone. Yeah, that actually, a good scone, scone is, is yeah. pretty good. It's pretty good, dude. Yeah. It's hard to find a bad. Uh, it's hard to find a good scone. Most of them suck. They think they can make scones, and it just yeah, it just ain't the case. No, you know. Not at all. Anyways, all right, I digress. And the, this dumpster fire doesn't need to burn anymore. So there you have it, guys. So stay tuned for that episode in a couple weeks. And just to let you guys know, we heard your comments as far as the bike packing episode. So Wyatt and I are in the posi uh, uh, position. Position. <laughs> Jeez, see, Wyatt and I are currently discussing the logistics to going up north to Flagstaff, and we're actually going to give some trail demos 
as far as the bike packing, mm -hmm. um, setting up full pack, how to balance the bike properly. We'll show you how to suture that tube and mm -hmm. everything like that. And then we'll hit the trails. So it's gonna be a fun time. Look for that one probably a little bit longer, maybe four or five weeks out, but we'll definitely get that one out. So mm -hmm. Wyatt, I can't thank you enough. Take off your gloves yeah, so I can yeah, shake your hand, that freaking dirty ass mint. So wet. there you go. <laughs> I'm not worried about wet, more oil than anything. <laughs> yeah. So guys, remember, if you liked the video, if you found it had some value, just do us a favor, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. If you feel so inclined, please share. Hit the subscribe button because that way when new videos come up, you will be sure to get a notification that they came up because yeah. the links down below are not affiliate links. And so the biggest way you can help this channel grow right now is liking and subscribing and tell a friend. Don't forget, there's also links down below for Check Bike West, Check Bicycle <laughs> Store West Phoenix. <laughs> yep. So if you have any questions, that relate to suspension or something else, braking, seats, anything like that, give them a call. They'd be more than happy to help you and they'd love to hear from you even more so. We also have links to our social media, Instagram, Facebook. Click those links, like us and follow us on those platforms because it definitely helps out as well. And uh, yeah, that's yeah, about it. Pretty, that, yeah, you know. fun. Thanks for yeah. tuning in. And, uh, Absolutely. So stick around for more coming soon. Yeah. And remember what we say, guys. Cohen, got to remind you guys, because I know some of you, you're like me, too much head trauma, you forget. Be kind to yourself and others. Always be amazing stewards out on that trail or in the other day when I was rollerblading, the sidewalk, the path. Yeah. You can always be a good Wherever steward. Wherever you are. Yeah. And we got to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out Arizona. We will see you on the next adventure. Wyatt, thanks again, buddy. Yeah, of course. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care, everybody. Cool.